Okay, so Terry Delisky, thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, you've sat in on the conference on uh, the keynote speech from Professor Bhagwati so far this morning. Uh, you've seen a little bit of the students voting in a poll in the first student forum that we've had here. What have you made of the conference so far? Well, um, I was quite interested to uh, listen to Bhagwati. Uh, I would say he's a liberal, uh, but I'm amazed because on the American way they are um, challenging much more than we are doing in the uh, European debates. And I, I was really uh, interested by his statement about the access to technologies. And if you look uh, to um, what we are missing in uh, European uh, farming, it's clearly the access to technologies because the green revolution, as you say, it is over. There is no more increase of yield. It's only more or less one person. It's more flat uh, zero uh, than, than even one person. Uh, so. What next? And the next is how to increase uh, our production. And therefore, we need access to new technologies. He was also challenging the issue of GMOs, saying there's not only GMOs, but maybe on other new technologies. But I would say definitively we should have a rational debate in the European Union about GMOs because we cannot continue the debate as it is uh, now. Uh, because this is a non-debate. It's a, a, a fight between believers and, and pro, the pro and the believers. And nobody will, we will reach absolutely no solution. By I've it. already heard this conversation around the building today so far that says, you know, everybody's right. Everybody's right because everyone thinks everybody's right. So there is no problem, is there? The, the, the issue of technology though is one that it seems to be a resonant theme for today and uh, the the lack of access or you know the barriers to it in Europe is it you know that that really exists doesn't it well it exists because uh, in most of the countries uh, there's a rejection uh, of it for political reason but there is what I in my mind is uh, preoccupating is the fact uh, that uh, we are uh, putting in danger the, the confidence in science. If we reject science, well, then we will have to, to find another system of another way of uh, governing the European Union. We have to accept that science might be right, and uh, we should not put in question all the statements done by scientists. This is one. Do you accept that science might be right with a tinge with a little bit of regret? Because it seems to me that you know some farmers, it's just there's still fear of the unknown. They feel eventually probably the weight of evidence, the body of evidence will suggest that probably it's okay. But you know they're quite they're quite regretful about that almost. Is that just fear of change? Well, this is a change of world, of mentality and of world, I do agree. Personally, I have no problem to accept the change, but I understand that some people uh, might regret the old past. But you know, we are always thinking about uh, the past and in terms that the past was better than the actual situation. I don't believe it's true. Biotechnology seems to, seems to still be a little bit of a kind of gives a shudder, a little bit of a dirty word. So do the advocates of biotechnology, and some of them are represented here today, do they need to be communicating better, more? Do oh, you yes. think within Europe? No, no doubt, no doubt. I think that the biotech has been probably the biotech sector has been probably a bit arrogant in the beginning, thinking, well, we have a solution, just buy your solution. This is too easy. They should communicate, they should explain why they were an advantage. And also, the first biotech they put on the market, at not, no, we're not offering a real advantage to farmers, nor even to the consumers. I do believe that was the missing link, and I strongly believe that uh, in the next few years, we, if they are able to put on the market seeds or crop resistant to drought, for example, of even uh, when we are dealing with potatoes, um, potatoes re resistant to the blight, everybody will say, well, this is welcome. Then, then the advantage will be evident, even in environmental terms. But we should have um, a, a clear discussion about the uh, impact analysis, and we should consider the advantage of such technologies before making a decision. But I believe that, of course, some of uh, the products of the, the, uh, of the genes who will be on offer will be then welcome. And others maybe not, because there, is no, no, there will be no clear advantage. You're the Secretary General of the European Landowners uh, Organization. So, you know, it was a bad year last year. I think we can talk about food crisis, we can talk about financial crisis. Well, well how is 2010? You know, well, what shape are you in for this year and looking to the next 
to the short term, to the next couple of years? Well, it's quite a, a good question. Uh, let's say that um, the perspectives are not very good because the, the stock uh, on uh, grain are very high and so we, the, the price uh, of the market, at, at the term, term price on the market are quite deflated, which is not a good news. So we do expect, once again, a difficult year in front of us. And last year was already quite difficult for a lot of farms. I would say that for commercial farmers, well-organized and structured farmers, they can cope with that and they can go through. But uh, we are not living alone. We are in a global world and there are farms of every kind of type and size. And uh, we have to be concerned uh, if a lot of um, small size of uh, family size um, dealing with uh, maybe dairy uh, are put into difficulty. It's really a bad news and we really have to uh, try to develop a solution for them and not to say, okay, commercial farms can go through. No, it's the global sector which is in danger for the time. Thierry, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the conference today. Thank you.